I'm joined by the former Northern Ireland Secretary of State, Lord Hayne. Formerly Peter Hayne. Good to talk to you, Lord Hayne. Well, you've had plenty of dealings in your time there with the DUP, I know. And, and, and talk to us then about the potential for the DUP to go for a hardliner and what that might mean. Well, it's a very serious moment in Northern Ireland politics generally. And a shame for, her, for Arlene Foster because she was the first woman leader of unionism in Northern Ireland. She broke the glass ceiling and many people saw her as a very hopeful figure in the early stages. But I think she lost her way and the DUP lost its way. And the fact is that even her own constituents, two of whom you interviewed, didn't really know what she stood for in the end. But her biggest failure, and it wasn't just her, the DUP hitched their wagon to Boris Johnson's uh, Brexit. And that was always going to end up in a mess in Northern Ireland. There was either going to be a border across the island of Ireland with a republic to the south, or there was going to be controls and checks across the Irish Sea to the rest of the United Kingdom, England, Scotland and Wales. And it's Boris Johnson wasn't honest with her and she was taken in by him. He sold her a pup. And I think that ultimately is why her leadership has ended. Okay. Uh, she got taken in by him. And, uh, you know, it's created a situation in Northern Ireland of great unionist unease and loyalist unease in particular, mm. which has been responsible for the some of the unrest and the, uh, the trouble that we saw on our television screens over recent weeks. Yeah, but staying with the, the Brexit theme, you mentioned there the, the gullibility, I suppose, when it came to taking the Prime Minister's word about there being no border between the, the rest of the UK and Northern Ireland. But doesn't it go further back than that in the support for the Theresa May administration when the DUP clearly had the whip hand and three times at least opposed Theresa May on the backstop, and if she'd stayed in power, the DUP, there wouldn't be an election till a general election till next year. The DUP would still be in an incredibly powerful position. They would have, and they'd have had a better deal from Theresa May on Northern Ireland from their point of view than they got from Boris Johnson. They enthusiastically jumped aboard Boris Johnson's bus and it's careered off the road for Northern Ireland. Uh, so ultimately, that was a failure of her leadership, but it is a failure collectively of all her MPs and assembly members and collectively of the, the, the DUP's leadership. And it's paid a price at the polls. I mean, the DUP's uh, managed to both alienate peoples to its right, the traditional Ulster parties picked up votes at its expense, and to the centre, where the alliance parties picked up former DUP voters. So it doesn't really, isn't really clear what it stands for anymore. And ultimately, and I remember talking to senior D DUP politicians, many of whom are my friends from my time as Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, and asking them what they really thought was going to be the outcome of Brexit, and particularly this hard Brexit that wasn't aligned with the rest of the Union, the, the, the European Union. And they didn't have a clue. They never had an answer to mm. it. And they've ended up in, in the predicament where they've paid the price and Northern Ireland's paid the price. And, Lord Hayden, we're running out of time, but I want to put you a, a potential big picture here. If the, the DUP tears itself apart, and already, uh, electorally, we are seeing the, the rise and rise of, of Sinn Féin at both sides of the border, there is a potential, isn't there, what, within a, a couple of years' time, there could be... a a uh, Sinn Féin First Minister in Northern Ireland and uh, a Sinn Féin Taoiseach or Prime Minister in the Republic of Ireland? Well, it's very uncertain times ahead. There's no question about that. And Brexit is the trigger for it. And the DUP hits themselves to a particularly hard form of Brexit. But what we now need is leadership from the Prime Minister and the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland to really engage with local politics, because the DUP is clearly in a crisis. Unionism is in a situation of uncertainty and insecurity. And that is not good for Northern Ireland's future. And what you need from the unionists is building bridges, as Arlene Foster hinted that she wanted to do at the beginning and in her resignation statement, building bridges across the divide that you know so well, Dermot, that has, has disfigured Northern Ireland for so long. We thought with Ian Paisley and Martin McGuinness joining together and becoming the Chuckle Brothers in 2007, that there was a new 
Pope. And, you know, they've governed together with ups and downs and suspensions, but nevertheless stayed in power together ever since, with the exception of that three-year suspension. So it can be done, but it requires not sectarian leadership from the DUP, but the DUP working with everybody else and other parties, particularly Sinn Féin, doing the same, or we could see the whole Stormont fall over again and a political crisis across Northern Ireland developing. That's what I fear. And I know when you're talking about building bridges to Northern Ireland, you're not referring to Boris Johnson's plans for a physical one in no, a roundabout. No, I'm certainly not. And I man. want him to stop talking about bridges. I want him to get over there and talk to the local parties and be a proper Prime Minister like John Major and Tony Blair and Gordon Brown were. OK. Lord Hayne, great talking to you. Thank you very much indeed, Peter Hayne.